cool. So I'm seeing that people are finishing. And so uh, if you can't turn on your videos, guys, and you're having troubles, don't worry about it. As long as you can hear me, that should be fine. Uh, cool. So we're going to take maybe a couple seconds more, 30 seconds more, 45 seconds. And we're going to talk about this text. Um, and if it works at the bottom, uh, if you guys can talk, I'd really appreciate that. If not though, I'd like you guys to write down your thoughts on a scratch paper or like a, preferably like a notebook and you can give over your thoughts. And so, because this is so many people, um, we're going to get through this and it's going to be a little bit hard, but I think we can do it. Um, as long as you guys kind of, you know, maintain order. And if you want to talk, just go ahead and unmute yourself and then, um, go in and talk and just be mindful of everyone else. Oh, if you guys can't unmute yourself, I pretty sure I changed that, but I can check again. Yeah. If you guys can un I can't unmute yourself, um, then I'll ask a question and I'll give you some time to write your thoughts down. And then I'll kind of explain my idea of thinking of what my, my idea of the questions is. And hopefully you can learn from that. Um, this is a little bit frustrating for me as well because Normally you should be able to unmute yourself, but I'm not totally sure why not. Uh, but I'll get that fixed by next class. So, um, so basically what's happening in this passage is, I'll give you guys time to write it down. Um, I'll give you guys a minute. So what's happening in this passage? What's the basic concept? Um, what do you think just happened? Uh, and yeah, pretty much what's the basic summary? All right, so that's been some time. Uh, and so basically in my understanding of this passage is that Tom, who is this character that um, we don't really know much of, but apparently he has discovered this cool rule where in order to make someone do what he wants to do, like in order to make someone do work, they have to um, be lied to or almost uh, thought of, like convinced that it's actually play. Like they, um, basically that no one's going to do anything unless they, if they're forced to do it. Um, and so basically what the narrator is saying is that um, he's discovered this great law that, you know, in order to make someone want to do something, they actually have to want to do it. You can't force them to do it. It has to be of their own thinking almost. Um, so what has Tom most likely done, just done in this book, or uh, just done before this passage? Uh, I think we just, kind of I kind of just talked about this but most likely Tom has been given like a task to do something right maybe he's you know has to you know make dinner or maybe has to you know play with his friends and he wants to go first or something in order so most likely he has deceived um you know the people or the character other characters uh um and basically has made them think that their own thinking is that his thinking is their own thinking, so that way he can get what he wants. So another question I want you guys to write down is who, and this is gonna be a short one, um, who's narrating the book or who, knew, who do you think is narrating the book and what person is it being shared in?
So that should be it. So this is in third person, um, as it's not someone directly talking. It's not Tom's point of view. It's like a overarching, like I like to think of it as a bird's eye view. Um, and so narrating this book, it doesn't really say in this passage, it's very hard to um, see, but it tells you that if he had been a great wise philosopher, like the writer of this book. So that makes me think that this person is, whoever's narrating it is a relatively um, educated person and he's someone that thinks very highly of himself uh, as he says a great wise philosopher maybe even a little bit um, too a little bit selfish because he describes himself with his attributes um, and so I think when you read any passage you want to make sure that you know who is speaking or who is you know describing the events because everyone's every character um, has their own bias or has their own opinion of what happens. And so, you know, for example, um, it's not as objective, uh, it's called like an unreliable narrator. Um, and so this means that, you know, they see something that happens or they explain something that happens. Like if I was writing a book about my life, I might say, oh, me, Nathan, or I, Nathan, am the smartest guy in the world and no one can tell me elsewise. Uh, and, and so because of that, um, right, you can't always, I know it sounds weird, but you can't always trust what a book has to say. Um, and so you have to read it with mild skepticism or know that like, oh, this is the character's thoughts, right? It might be wrong, it might be right, um, but it's the character's thoughts and you can't totally take that as fact unless the book is asking you according to this character or a question that's asking you according to this character, what is this character thinking, blah, blah, blah. So um, earlier in this passage, it says, Tom said to himself that it was not such a hollow world after all. So what do you guys think about the phrasing hollow world? What does that kind of suggest about this world or suggest about, um, you know, Tom's world or Tom's uh, life or way of being? And go ahead and write this down. And this should be a more lengthy response because it's uh, a lot to dig into there. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but I'll be back in a second. I'm having some tech issues. Uh. So you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Am I muted? Am I good now? Yeah, yeah. yeah now you're, you're good. You're good now. Yeah. Sorry, I'm working some tech issues. There's been, I don't know, some stuff popping up on my screen. I can't control my screen sometimes. Uh, so, you know. Oh, that's we'll weird. Oh, that's you weird. You have to disable annotations, and I've seen you done that. Mm -hmm. You're right, and I right. did. So 
now that I guess you can hear yourself, um, why don't you guys tell me, or one at a time, I guess, so please share, um, but we share and have an actual discussion, but what do you guys think about Hollow World? Like, what do you think Tom Hollow means? Hollow World is kind of like a totally different world, maybe. I think when I hear the word <laughs> hollow world. world, to me, it means a world that is like full of depression or something. Uh -huh. I think hollow world maybe, maybe. like like oh, what I realize. You guys, guys, take it one at a time. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a simple world. A simple world. I think hollow world means like a world with that is very very boring. Mm hmm. Hello. Alright, I think everyone who wanted to talk has gotten a chance, unless anyone wants to pipe up right now. Nobody probably. A lot. It would be a lot easier if you, the people who wanted to speak, just raised their hand and then you called on them and they immediately. Uh. Let me check because it's, it's as I said, I've been it's been really weird where I can't really do anything on my screen. Um okay. and so if we'll see if that works. Yeah. But I'm not totally convinced that it will. Because... The last three hundred of first passage. Right. Maybe our internet is slow. Maybe. Ooh. We'll see. Yeah. Uh that's so matter, that's, that's it. it. Everyone yeah. can mute yourself now. Um, so here's what I think about Hollow World. Yes, it's totally, it might be like some other, it's most likely not some other world, but it's definitely maybe something like, maybe like something simple, different about maybe, the world. Maybe filled with the so, uh, what I heard someone say. Um, but hello, me, I feel like a uh, Hollow World might be more of uh, Tom doesn't know what to do with himself. Like, uh, he doesn't have, he doesn't have that he might have opportunities but he doesn't know what to do with them he doesn't have a purpose in the world right that might make you feel really hollow that might make you feel you know there's nothing out of you there's nothing driving you um and so from this context right we know that um most likely has you know kind of tricked someone into doing Uh, so that might mean more hollow world, like he has to have a purpose. Uh, and so the thing about metaf metaphors or like descriptives like this is that they're really up to interpretation. Um, and so when you look at a book or something, there's most likely the most correct interpretation, but it's never the most correct unless the author specifically says so. All right. So, um, what do you think about the writer's demeanor and tone? Like, what do you think their thoughts about Tom is or are like what do you think their um just entire personality is you can write it down uh and feel free to speak up if you want to share your thoughts the raising your hand thing I'm not sure that's totally going to work right now um but I'll look into that for next classes Okay, I see Kirag, Chirag. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and talk if your hand is raised. That, and that was about Hollow World. And if I were to speak for that, basically what my thoughts were was that it, it's like, it's quite empty. Like hollow means like empty, like shallow. And really mm -hmm. it just, it needs something to be like filled in for them to like yeah. totally understand about how to conceptualize how their world is around them and how, you know, what purpose of thinking of, you know, different objects of life is there? That was my thoughts. Uh, Evan, I see your hand is raised. If you want to talk, Evan, or unmute yourself. Um, I think like a hollow world is like 
some kind of if you're mad or angry, some kind of depression. It's some it's some sort of not happiness. Mm-hmm. So I guess we can talk about hollow world a little bit more. Um, and so from the word hollow itself, right, it has a negative connotation. It's not something that you think is happy, like, oh, hollow, that means, you know, all rainbows, happiness, uh, smiley faces, right? It only means something like, you know, more sadness, more emptiness, right? Which is the, essentially the word hollow itself. And so that maybe to me, that bits Tom at, he's someone who isn't totally happy of himself. He isn't totally, like, you know, like, I know what to do or totally sure of himself. Um, and so that's what I was talking about, like, not finding a purpose or not having a purpose that he totally knows of. Okay. So if you guys want to raise your hands, who, what do you think of the author's demeanor and tone? Go ahead and, uh, Keurig, or tell me how to pronounce that. I'm totally sure. Sorry. It's from Chirag. Chirag, okay. Yeah. So um, I don't have much evidence, but when I was reading the text, it felt like the narrator gave like a negative connotation towards Tom, and he mm-hmm. thinks of him as, you know, not as, you know, successful or not as conceptualizing of, you know, his purpose and his thinking, rather that he should, like the narrator should be, like a role model to him, like, it, like for example, if he had been a great and wise philosopher, like the writer of this book, so there and that just points to like, like the narrator thinks he's like, like he's a some kind of great person, and that if Tom had, you know, if Tom has his personality, that he could have possibly been more successful with his thinking and conceptualizing mm-hmm. of his understanding of the world. That, that was my thought. Uh, Michelle? Um, I think um, that the author or the narrator thinks that he's a lot better than Tom, and Tom would do good if he was, like, as good as him. hmm Yeah, so I think really well put. So basically... Uh, in my understanding is that the narrator himself is likely more educated um right if you see he has been a great and white philosopher like the writer of this book which we assume is also the narrator um it seems like as if he holds himself to a very high standard right it seems that he thinks himself as better as tom but it also seems that maybe he sees a little bit like tom has potential right he could have been such a wise philosopher. He, he had discovered this law. He seems to recognize that Tom is a smart person, right? And so my ideas of the narrator are that, you know, he's someone who holds himself to a very high standard, yet at the same time, he's someone that, you know, maybe might not be able to see the whole perspective. Like he has to be right all the time. Um, Werner, go ahead and see your hand raised. Warner, if you want to unmute yourself. No? Okay. So, um, so next one, we're going to go, this is my, this is probably going to be the last question about this passage. Um, and so what impression does this passage give you about Tom? Like, what do you guys think about Tom right now? What does the narrator tell you? What are his, like, quote unquote, like, what we think of his actions so far. H-I-T-P-A. Um, Tien? Um, I'm just saying there's something that I disagree with you about. You said that, like, the if, in my opinion, I don't mm-hmm. think the author is saying, like, you said that, like, in this passage, the author is saying that like Tom has potential and he could be this thing, but I think that like he's saying that like if he, it's not, I don't think he was saying that he is like a very smart person. He hasn't, he, he said, he just said like 
if he was like very smart, then he could, then he would under, then he would like understand what he just discovered. Mm-hmm. But like you, but like he, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with him having potential. Okay, I totally get where you're coming from, and I value that. Um, and so. I think that one of the beauties is about reading is that everyone has their own interpretations, right? And so I can totally see where you're coming from. And so as you guys know, you know, I'm only a student myself. I'm not like a, you know, college professor or someone who's been to like told like schools and schools of college and stuff, right, to learn this. And so it, I totally think it's okay if you guys disagree with my opinions and stuff, because this is still my opinions. Um, but this is what I got from the text. And so if you guys disagree with me, totally fine. Like, I respect that. And make sure you voice your opinions, right? Because if you tell your side of the story, that means everyone else in the class sees, oh, there's two perspectives. It's not just like Nathan's perspective, right? Um, or the collective perspective. Uh, MC, I see your hand is raised. And I'm just reading your name tag. So if you're, yeah. MC, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and think about what Tom or the suppression of Tom? No? All right, Kirag? So, um, Tom, up to, like, this point of the passage, you know, what, uh, if I were to infer, I would think of him as, like, like a procrastinator, like a freelancer, like, he doesn't really care about, you know, having to work hard, or having to attain some difficult task. However, once he gets to this point, he starts like, you know, he starts getting some thoughts in his head, uh, like uh, such as, you know, he thinks that um, he discovered this uh, great law of human action of how they work and how they act. And he thinks, you know, it's a hollow world and we discuss about that. So I, I think he he's starting to realize more and more about how the world actually like shapes up and how the world around him is affecting him. Mm-hmm. Nice. Evan, your hand is still raised, so I can't tell if you're... Um, I just want to say, what was the question again? Um, what are your impressions about Tom? What do you think about him? And this might be like, he's funny, he's dumb, he might be like athletic. Uh, what do you think uh, about his personality? Or what do you think about him as a general? Like, what do you think he's realizing in this uh, moment? I think he's like, he, he takes his work and all that he does. And one day he takes the standards very high. It's mm-hmm. like, he wants to do everything good because in the text it says if he had been a great and wise philosopher like the writer of this book he would now have comprehended that work consists of whether what whatever a body of a blood to do nice all right so here's my impression of tom to me i feel like tom is a cunning kind of smart guy and so i get that from here it says, in order to make a man or a boy covet some, a thing, it is only necessary to make the thing difficult to attain. So that's what Tom learns, right? And so to me, that suggests that he has, you know, tricked someone into doing something or he has, you know, manipulated people. And so while that is, you have to be very smart to this, not to discover it, but to be able to use that ability. Um, at the same time, right, you, that there's kind of a evilness to that. There's kind of a bad part to that. And so that's what gives me the impression of why cunning comes to my mind. Because cunning means you're smart, right? But it also has a negative implication to it. Um, Okay, so here is the context that I might have been showing for quite some time. But here's the context. And I know it's a lot of reading, but um, it probably should clear up what just happened. Like what this is the first leading up to the um, passage we just read. So go ahead and take some time to read that.
and don't worry if there's words that you don't know. Um, hopefully you can make it out from context. Um, but some of these words we're, I'm going to go over and some of these words that I would highly encourage you guys, if you don't know, to go online and search them up or make flashcards or something, because it just always gets to know words. All right, maybe take a minute more. And I'm just going to want to make sure everyone has enough time to really digest or really get through all this work. Not work, but like, yeah. All right, cool. So um, hopefully from this context, and I think I'm seeing a lot of chat, I've been trying to look through chat, but it's a lot. I got like hundreds of, I just got a hundred messages or something just all at one time. So um, if you are just spamming chat, please don't, Evan. So if you're going to spam chat, I would really ask that you don't because it makes it harder for everyone, for me to respond or kind of talk to everyone. But so just basically from this context, what do you guys think of Tom now? Uh, so let's start with Dylan. So from the text, you can see that like he, um, someone, he's whitewashing a fence and then so, um, he has, um, I think someone called Ben, um, just wants to wa wa also wa whitewash it. But then right here, he, um, he doesn't know if he's gonna allow the person to um, whitewash it. And then he kind of like, um, I think he's make, kind of making an excuse or like um, something like that because, um, and he says like Aunt Polly, um, if something happened to it, then he would, uh, she would get mad. But then at the end, um, 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 he, um, um, with, even with reluctance, he gives the brush to, to Ben. And then, and then something, and then, but then he says, and then he sees, and then the last, but the last line is playing the slaughter of more innocence. So then it kind of confuses me of what he's trying to do. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Don't worry. Um, sorry if I'm going to mispronounce your name, but Cargini. I think the tag is professional artist also on your thing. If you want to speak or if you want to talk about your opinions. I believe that now Tom Sawyer seems to be like a good kid. He like he seems to like whitewashing, so he might actually he might be like a good kid. Uh-huh. Maybe. And All right. he doesn't want his friend to do it because he wants to do it. And okay. it on Polly's Drake. Okay, 
Drake, are you okay? Or okay. Um, so if you're raising your hand, don't worry, I'm gonna get to you. Uh, just, there's multiple people raising their hands. So, all right, Carol. Carol Lee. Uh, okay, so um, I disagree. So Tom is definitely not a good kid. So what he's doing here is actually like, he's just, he's like, I think he's like not, well, he's, I guess he's first at first doing work. And then like, he makes it seem like this work is really like prestigious and hard and like, not many people can do it. So he like tricks Ben into doing the work and giving him an apple. So he's like just letting someone else do the. So like Ben is basically paying Tom to do work, which is like, so he's like very clever, but kind of evil, <laughs> like the last place. Nice. Uh, uh, sorry, Warner, I see your hand up. Or um, I agree with Carol. Um, I just think that Tom, instead of usually you have you pay other people to do work for you, but in this case, someone else is paying Tom to do work for him. Nice. Um, Melly. No. Um, I think that um, Tom isn't a very good kid. Uh, well, he's bad, but he's good. It's like, um, he's basically deceiving Ben, but he's good because, like, he's very clever and cunning. Nice. All right, so I'm going to give my thoughts, um, but don't worry if your hand is up, then I'll try to get to you. There's a lot of people, though, so uh, I want to keep this moving. So basically, right, we learn kind of that Tom almost manipulates Ben, or Tom manipulates Ben into doing his work. And so I get the idea of, I heard earlier, right, how, you know, Tom might enjoy doing work, or maybe that's, maybe Tom doesn't want Ben to do the work. Um, but what's happening here is that Ben is wondering, like, what do you call work? Like, or, or like, why ain't that work, right? He's, he basically said, uh, like, what are you doing this work for? And Tom basically goes on a rant saying, you know, oh, this isn't work. This is fun. Like, I have to do this. And it's something that I really enjoy. And that obviously makes Ben be seem like, oh, that's interesting. Let me try. And Tom's like, no, I, I have to do this. This is my own thing. And so basically, he's manipulating Ben into giving him something in return for doing Tom's work. And so this is why um, you can really see Tom's kind of cunning or smartness here. Because he almost ma he manipulates Ben into doing his work, right? But at the same time, you kind of see the negative part because if, you know, Tom is like a good friend, I mean, your good friend probably wouldn't force you or kind of trick you into doing your work, right? And so you kind of see maybe there is a bad side to Tom, but it's also you can kind of see how smart he is. Um, okay, Sally. If you want to speak about more, um, yeah. What does reckon? Reckon? Wash. Um, so reckon means to uh, slaughter and injun me. Okay. So I heard reckon, whitewash, injun, and that was it. Yeah. So I guess we'll start with that. So reckon means to. Um, like think, like I reckon that that costs 30 cents or something. It's a think. Um, to whitewash, that's like painting a fence. Um, and so they're painting the fence white. And injun is a term that we don't really use anymore, but it means basically a Native American or a Native, uh, yeah, a Native American or a person, pretty much. Uh, okay, Kira. Okay. If you want to speak or um, share your thoughts. Um, I think that um, he is good because he thinks that um, 
um, Ben should be careful to do it, and it might look bad if he um, does it wrong. Uh huh. Okay, so um, I guess that's I'm gonna leave off answering right now, just context wise, right there. So I want to get this through. So, um, so, um, so uh, if you guys could mute yourself or yeah, make sure there's no echo. So basically, right, Tom is probably, he might be a good kid, but in this passage, right, we know that he's not. He's more of a cunning kid or he's more um, someone with a ulterior motive. And so although he may say that he wants to do the fence, right, that's really a play to get Ben to paint the fence for him. And so you can really, that's really emphasized right there in the last parts where he says, um, Tom gave up his brush with a reluctance on his face, but alacrity in his heart. And if you don't know what alacrity means, it, don't mean, it means almost like excitement. It means, um, yeah, it means like excitement, like he's ready for it. Um, and so it shows that internally he actually wanted Ben to do, like that was his plan all along for Ben to whitewash the fence. And then it's really apparent in the last line. It says, um, the retired artist sat on the barrel in the shade close by, dangling his legs, munched, um, munched his apple, and planned the slaughter of more innocence. And that's really interesting, right? Slaughter of more innocence. That's not something that, you know, really says, you know, right off, like, good kid. This is someone that, um, you know, it has a more sinister tone. And so what do you guys, all right, so I'll start with retired artist. So the um, Mark Twain's use of retired artist is really like, it's really interesting here, right? What do you think he means by artist itself? Uh, Ella? What's it? Ella, I see your hand is raised if you want to. What does water mean? Where is it? Water? Water. On the last um, could you point me out to where it is? I can't I can't seem to see it or find it. On the last line. On the last, slaughter. So slaughter means to kill, pretty much. It means to pretty pretty much brutally kill. Um all right, so does anyone have any thoughts on what uh, Mark Twain means by when he says retired artist? Um, Sophie, a Sophie. A Sophie, uh, I'm reading. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, I am at, I'm answering the previous question. I think that I would describe Tom as like a good person, but also a potential bad person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anyone else have thoughts on the artist though? Alvin? So my thoughts on the retired artist is that, I think what it means is that like he he used to be an artist, like he was whitewashing the fence, but then when he gave the paintbrush to, uh, what was his name again? To Ben. So then mm -hmm. wasn't he wasn't whitewashing the fence anymore? He used to, but now he isn't. So I think that's what retired artist is. Nice. So that's definitely a um, more literal meaning, and that's definitely right. You know, that definitely makes sense. Um. And I would agree with you there. Um, Doran, do you want to have any, do you want to add on to what uh, Alvin just said? Oh, and I, I can show you guys the phrase, sorry. I'm seeing tech right now. It's pretty much for, let me pray about it. Because um, before he was painting the fence and now, and then he stopped because he gave Ben the job. So he, yeah, he was pretending to paint the fence and he, and so then he stopped. So it's technically like he was tired. Um, okay, so to me, a retired artist means that basically, 
So although it means definitely like, it definitely means like he just painted it, right? And now he passed it on to Ben. And so now he's not painting anymore, right? He's a retired artist. But it also kind of seems like an artist, an artist is someone that, you know, really takes time into perfecting his craft or her craft, right? They take time in building it from the ground up and they, you know, pretty much spend um, a lot of effort in making something, right? And so this might mean that Tom is an artist um, more like, He's an artist in convincing, right? He convinced Ben or he manipulated Ben. Um, so along those lines, if uh, anyone wants to speak up on it, I think I see Kurag hand up, go for it. Yeah, so what's funny here is that he, he says retired artist and the thing is, like, in, like, in other people's responses, they said, like, artists, like, he's whitewashing slash painting the fence. But it really, if you think about it, that's not, like, the main point of artists. Really, the artistry here is his cunningness, and his cunningness to deceive Ben by persuading him into doing the job for him. He can, you know, he can, you know, you know get out of that job. So that's, and then... He after Ben does the job for him, he doesn't have to, uh, he doesn't have to persuade him into this job anymore, making him retired. And the artistry here is his cunningness. Yeah, wow, um, that's well said, uh, Lin Linda iPad. If you want to see, I think you spoke to me. Um, do you want to unmute yourself and share your thoughts? Sorry, which thoughts should I share on? Um, just what you said right now. Like, what what about retired artists? If okay, um, all right. So I see Eliza, Eliza, your hands up if you want to share. What does um, uh, what does shucks mean? Shucks? Yeah. Oh, shucks is like, oh, darn it, or something. It's like a onomatopoeia kind of word, or it's kind of like an expression like, darn it, uh, I'll have to be more careful or something. And also, what does alacrity mean? Alacrity? Um, do you mean by alacrity in his heart? And also, what does afeard mean? Afeard? Um, I, I think I'm hearing afeard. And so afeard means to basically just mean like I'm afraid, basically. Uh, and then for alacrity, it means like a cheerfulness, like almost like a excitement. Um, hopefully that helps. Cool. So I think, yeah, so retired uh, Kirag said it really well about how it's almost his craft, right? Um, and I think I saw Lynn, um, he sent me a, a chat uh, that I saw. And so um, basically a retired artist is almost like his manipulative or his, uh, his manipulative uh, like plans, right? That's what he put his art into. That's his craft almost like, you know how you would say like he's a, craft of this or a master of deception or something right that's kind of like the same lines um okay so i think we're going to talk about this last part this last um phrase and i'll draw it out right here but slaughter of more innocence that's you know that's that's a lot right so what do you think mark twain or tom means by that like what does this really mean because obviously i mean obviously he's not really going to um slaughter kids or kill keep kill people but yet this phrasing makes it really interesting uh i see alvin's hand is up so when i think slaughter more innocent innocence mean although you said slaughter means to basically like kill brutally i don't think it means to kill brutally here so what i think mm -hmm is he kind of manipulated Ben into doing his work while Ben had to pay him. So, and maybe I think what it means is that he planned 
how he's going going to manipulate another kid into doing like something he doesn't want to do while he gets something. Nice. Iris? Iris Moo? Okay, um, Amy H, if you want to share your thoughts. Like, like it's metaphorically? Yeah. Uh, so what do you think the metaphor is? Uh, Jonathan, if you want to share Jonathan Wong. Um, I think it means that Tom likes to control or manipulate other people into doing things. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, yeah, I heard it. That's pretty well said. Um, so the slaughter of more innocence is pretty much him saying, like, oh, I'm going to get more people to whitewash the fence. Like, so in this case, the slaughter would be manipulating, right? And innocence would be more kids, the innocent kids that don't really know, you know, he's manipulating them, right? And so from this, right, we really get that from Tom. Tom is kind of more of a sly kid, right? He's not the most trustworthy. He's not the most, um, you know, let's say like a good kid, I'd say perhaps. That's probably not the best word choice, but he is really cunning and we can really see how smart he is here. All right. So we're going to go into some um, vocabulary here. And so this is the part of the class that we're going to do stems. And so um, I really recommend you guys to take notes during this part or not. And they don't have to be good notes, but just take notice of all the stems. And so the hope is, is that from these stems, right, that you'll be able to uh, be able to memorize them for the next class we have next week on Tuesday and be able to retain that knowledge. And we'll be playing maybe a game if we have extra time um, and to like trick you all or not trick you, sorry, to test you all. Um, and so, yeah, it should be fun. And it's also going to really help you in the future, just, you know, knowing these stems, uh, especially when you don't know words, it help, really helps you put words together. So um, I really recommend, again, using flashcards or making a quizlet for all these uh, stems later on. And for right now, you can just take notes on these stems. So from for vocab, so we saw attain in the earlier passage. And so, for those of you that do know, um, I'd appreciate if you guys just kind of, um, you know, just keep it in your head. And so, but I, I want to mention, so attain means to hold, right? That if you see that second part of that word, attain, attain means to hold, what might attain mean? Or what might, so what might it be suggested with? And I want you guys to think about it. Um, and I'm not going to be going through raising hands for this part because uh, I for this part I'm just going to be talking um, but so attain the meaning of attain is to succeed in achieving achieving or obtaining something right it means to get something right to hold something right so if you said I attained the highest um, reward the one in karate right the one of getting a black belt I mean I achieved that right and so to hold that honor, um, that's kind of where it comes from. And so if you know the word tain, it can really help you, or the stem tain or root tain, it can really help you um, find the definition of these other words, of other words that include it. And so the thing I want to mention about all stems though, is that not all of them just because they're in the word mean that thing, right? Just because tain is part of the word doesn't necessarily mean the word itself has to do with hold. Um, but here are some examples of words that do. So obtain, contain, detain, maintain, retain. These are all kind of things like obtain is to get a hold of, right? Contain is to keep a hold of, right? To keep it someplace. To detain is to um, take something away to kind of uh, put it, like when you detain someone, that's when you put them in jail, right? And so you keep them there in holding or you keep them there, uh, like you hold them there, right? You keep them on that side. To maintain is to keep it at one certain level, right? Is to hold it at a certain point. And to retain is to remember, to hold it up in your head almost, right? 
And so all, although it may sound like a stretch, right? These actually are, um, if you look at all these words, if you go online, right, you search up words that contain tame the root, right? You'll see that there's also, there's always gonna be like a slight connection or it's always gonna be a connection that comes eventually back to hold. And so these um, words on the bottom or these so-called like just phrases that I mean you might see like cap, capped, uh, sept, sip, habit, hibit, ten, tin. These all mean hold. And so this is the part where I'm saying if you want to take notes, these are the words you should hold write down. So tain, cap, capped, sept, sip, habit, hibit, ten, and tin. And so if you see these um, words in like other texts or other words, more likely than not that they have something to do with the word or with the meaning hold, right? And so, um, you know, I could be teaching you guys all these different words. I could be teaching you what obtain means, what contain means, what detain means. More helpful to get kind of a space knowledge of stems. And because of that, they apply to so many other more words. And because of that, it's a lot more helpful. So hopefully you guys can take notes. Um, I also want to mention that our class goes from 11 or is an hour and a half. So whenever your time is, it might be two o'clock on the East Coast or for me on the West Coast, it's 11 o'clock. It's going to be going from two to 3.30 or uh, 11 to 12.30. I mean, we might be ending shorter, but it's always around that time. So philosopher, right? And so this one might seem a little bit weird if you guys know the meaning. So filio means love or philo. Uh, means love, right? And so you might think, oh, philosopher has to do with something with love, right? It has to be maybe someone who loves something, right? But um, here's the actual meaning. It's a noun, and it means like a thinker, a person who, stunder, uh, who studies or ponders knowledge, reality, or existence, right? And at first, right, there's no connection between love. It's like, what? It's, there's nothing there, right? But if you look at the origin from Greek, um, it actually makes a lot more sense. So the original word of philosopher um, or philosophy came from philo uh, philosophia, phil philia sophia. Um, sorry, probably butchered that, but it, you guys get the point. So philio means to love and sophia means to wisdom, right? And so together, philia sophia means a love of wisdom. And so when you connect this back to philosopher, right, the point of a philosopher is to study, you know, knowledge reality, existence, one might say wisdom, right? To become more wise, to become more knowledgeable. And so this is kind of where it comes in and it might seem like a stretch again, but of course it's gonna, it, it always, there's always some connection there, right? And some other words, you probably may not have heard these, but philodox and philodemic. So um, philodox means to, sorry, philodox means uh, a person with like, who's really obsessed with their opinion, who really loves their own opinions, right? And while a philodemic means someone, uh, oh, my notes are all over the place. Uh, so a philodemic means having a love for people, loving other people, right? So, um, so for this stems, right, for these roots, they're gonna be all focused on love. So the am and ami, those are also roots that mean love. So if you see like amiable, right? That means to be friendly, but also means, um, yeah, I guess you could say, right? To love other people, right? To be friendly to other people, they're synonyms. Um, and so the words that you would be writing down for stems for you guys to memorize would be filio, am, and ami. On to the next one, consists. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys know what, know what consists means, but here it is again. So con means with, right? And so if con means with, then the definition must be used with with. So to be made of or composed of. So for example, like mm, this ice cream consists of milk, um, cream, and sugar, right? It means to be made of, right? And so um, other words that use con with it would be connect, concreate, or conjoin, right? So connect would be to connect with, like to be joined with together, joined together. Congregate means to come together, come together with other people, right? Um, and conjoin means to be connected to, right? And so all these have to do with something, right? It's a kind of connection between people. Um, and so 
Uh, other words I mean with are, or other stems or roots I mean with are co and com and con. So these are sound pretty similar, but they um, all mean with. Cool. So contemplate. And so, um, oh, so contemplate means to look through time or look thoughtfully at something for a long time, right? And so the root here would be temp. And I know it seems like, oh, you know, how do you figure out the root? You just kind of have to look for it. And so once you know all these roots, right, then they kind of pop out at you. So if temp means time, initially, right, you don't think it has anything to do with contemplate, which means just to, you might think just to think, right? But it really means to study. And to study something, you have to look at it for a quite some time. You have to spend some time with it. And so, again, it might seem like a stretch, but it actually is more similar than you might think. And once you get those roots in your head, right, they start making a lot more sense. So other words with temp would be temporary, right, having a short number of time. Contemporary is this kind of time period, like the modern time period. And for anyone who does music, tempo, right, that's how much you play the music or that's the speed that you play music. And so another thing for time or another stem for time is cron. And the way I remember this is for me, if any of you study Greek mythology, it would be Greek mythology. So Kronos, he was the Titan, um, Titan, and he was one of the first Titans, and he was the Titan of time, I'm pretty sure. That's how I studied these. So those are all the stems that we're working through, and all we can do questions if you have questions about them right now. Um, but I'll scroll through them right now one more time for if you guys need to take notes. So again, so temp and cron both mean time. Con and co and com both mean uh, all mean with. Uh, filio, am, and ami, they all mean love. And tain, cap, capped, sept, sip, habit, hip, it, ten, and tin all mean hold. And so um, I really recommend you guys making flashcards or quizlets, and these are going to really help you in the future. And I think I mentioned at the beginning of the class, we might do short kind of quizzes that won't really count anything um, because there's not going to be a grade for this. But there are going to be quizzes of knowledge just to make sure that you retain this and just ways to make sure you know that you know you're doing the work or you're spending time with this all right uh so i'm just going to go down the list of questions or hands raised so kirag i see your hand oh sorry i, I didn't have anything uh, okay here i can lower your hand um if you guys have your hand raised just, uh, and you don't have a question, just feel free to lower your hand. But Evan? No, nope. uh, Michelle? Michelle, do you have anything to say? Or? Okay, then I'll lower your hand. Uh, Jonathan? Jonathan Wong? Nope. Okay, and Werner? No. All right. So that's going to be around the end of my lesson. Um, I really hope you guys had a good time with that. And oh, let me check the chat. Sorry. Uh, all right. So yeah, I can send the slides on Google Classroom. So all right. In the future, yeah, we can we can do a small break. Um, I think that'd be a very reasonable thing. Uh, and yeah, so this class should be over. And I think, as I mentioned before, this class is normally an hour and 30 minutes long. Um, obliged, I'm seeing someone spamming chat. So I guess I'll say obliged means kind of forced to do. Like, I'm obliged to clean the kitchen after every meal. All right, you guys can all go head off. If you have any questions, um, feel free to stay on and just ask them. See you guys. Uh, yes, I will share the slides with you guys.
All right, Lynn, I should kick you. Um, I'll kick you from the lesson if your thing isn't working. Uh, okay. I'm assuming that you guys are here, you have questions, you can go ahead and just unmute yourself and ask them. Uh, there's no need to raise your hand. I think this is a small enough number of participants to ask. Oh, are you having trouble leaving, Evan? No, do you want me to, do you have a question or anything? Or I just can't, you can unmute yourself. Or I can unmute you if you need. Um, for the vocabulary, um, can I do something else to Questlet and flashcards? No, yeah, totally. Those are just my suggestions. Um, whatever works best for you, of course, is going to be the best for you. So, do you have any suggestions or? Um, so typically for me, flashcards work the best because they're really easy things to use. Um, if you don't have flashcards, you can use paper or something, and I like like. You can have this piece of paper, right? And you write something on the top. You can kind of fold it, right? And see, oh, I know that word. Then fold it back and check. Um, that works for me. Uh, Quizlet works for me. Those are for those two. I sell those two because those work for me just the most. Um, but if you have any other questions, like I'd say probably the least effective, but it's going to take some time, but it works if you don't have anything else to do is just write everything down and just kind of go through them like it's just repetition. Yeah, yeah. so for are we going to like complete the story of Tom? Uh, no, I just pulled passages of it. If you want to read it, though, it's called The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. It's a I would recommend it. It's a pretty good book in sense, but it's good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Bye. Bye. Um, anyone else have questions? If not, uh, I'm going to really like you guys, or it'd be nice if you guys could just sign off or it's not working or you could type or chat one to me.